Welcome back. Today we're recapping the movie The Shape of Water. During the Cold War in 1962, there was the Occam Aerospace Research Center, a secret government laboratory in Baltimore, Maryland. A mute woman, Elisa Esposito, works there as a janitor. She lives in a tiny apartment right above the movie theater. Elisa's life is a regular routine, each day similar to the one before. Ever since she was a child, Elisa has had scars on her neck and she has constantly wondered where they came from. Her neighbor Giles, a middle-aged artist, is one of Elisa's closest friends. Her other neighbors treat her relatively well, because she is a polite and friendly woman. She takes the bus to work, and when she comes to place, she is greeted by her favorite co-worker, Zelda Fuller. She always stands up for her friend when other co-workers try to hurt or intimidate Elisa. They are both responsible for keeping the offices and other areas clean. Their job is to go around the offices and rooms where the top executives work. During one of the work shifts, one of the managers announces that a new and very valuable object captured in South America has been brought to the research center. Accompanied by Richard Strickland, the man in charge of the project, a container of liquid is brought in. As Elisa gets closer to the container, something from inside strikes it, drawing everyone's attention. Frightened, the janitor friends leave the room and get to work. While cleaning the men's room, Elisa and Zelda encounter Colonel Strickland, who is very unfriendly. After a while, the cleaners hear a scream from the container room. Strickland comes out into the hallway without two fingers on his left hand, forcing the guards to run to his aid. The cleaners are instructed to quickly remove the blood from this room. As Elisa empties the bucket of water onto the floor, two of Colonel Strickland's missing fingers emerge from the corner. Elisa carefully places them in a bag to send to the hospital. She approaches the container and discovers that the object is an amphibian man. Fascinated by the creature, Elisa returns to the room the next day. She taps the container cautiously, but the object seems to have moved to a small pool standing nearby. She tries to get his attention and offers him an egg. In the days that follow, Elisa regularly sneaks in and feeds him boiled eggs. She even teaches him sign language and plays music for him on a gramophone. Now that she has met the amphibian man, she feels much happier. At this time, Dr. Robert Hofstepler, a scientist who is a Russian spy named Dmitry Mosenkov, sees Elisa establishing a close connection with an amphibian man. He informs his Soviet curators, saying that the creature is intelligent and can communicate. Hofstetler's superiors ignore this and order him to kill the creature before the Americans can advance their scientific research. During one of Elisa's encounters with the amphibian man, she sees him chained to a small platform, where Strickland brutally tortures him. Meanwhile, Strickland's superior, General Hoyt, wants to take the subject away for further research into space technology. Strickland manages to convince Hoyt that they should perform vivisection, a life-saving surgery on a living creature. Elisa overhears their conversation and becomes very upset. Then she asks Giles to help free the creature. She knows for a fact that if she does nothing, the amphibian man will surely die. Elisa continues to insist and eventually Giles agrees to help her. A bit later, Hofstetler meets with his superiors again. They hand him syringes and vials of poisonous liquid to kill the amphibian man, and Hofstetler is forced to obey their orders. Meanwhile, Elisa and Giles devise a plan to escape the amphibian man. He uses his skills as an artist to make the writing on the van and a fake ID for himself. At the lab, Elisa becomes the object of Strickland's attention. He intentionally spills his glass of water and forces a woman to clean his office. He harasses Elisa, after which she leaves. Hofstetler is preparing poison when Elisa begins to put her plan into action by turning the surveillance camera sideways. In Strickland's office, Hofstetler finds out about Elisa's plan and decides to help her. He then heads to the room with the subject. Elise flinches at the sight of Hofstetler. He also gives her the keys to remove the chain from the amphibian man. When Zelda leaves work, she senses that Elisa is up to something and decides to find her. Elisa imperceptibly pushes the amphibian man into a laundry cart and drives it down the hallway while Giles drives to the appointed location. He tries to drive into the building, but to no avail. Meanwhile, Zelda finds out about Elisa's plan. 
Hofstetler cuts the power with an explosive device and sticks a syringe of poison in the neck of the guard who stopped Giles at the entrance. They successfully load the amphibious man into the van and drive away. At the same time, Strickland and the guards rush to the exit, but do not make it in time. This makes him desperate and furious. Elisa, Giles, and the amphibian man successfully reach her apartment. They immerse him in a tub of water and chemicals that Hofstetler took with him to keep the amazing creature healthy. In a few days, when it rains, Elisa plans to let him out into a nearby canal, which will fill with water and provide easy access to the ocean. At the lab, Strickland and his team have already figured out exactly how the thieves managed to escape and steal their object. When Elisa and Zelda arrive at work the next evening, Strickland interrogates them, but doubts that they did it. He doesn't think that two women, one of whom is mute, could have successfully pulled off a high-security robbery at a government lab. At this time, Giles falls asleep in the apartment, watching the amphibian man. The latter climbs out of the bathtub and ends up eating one of the cats in the apartment. After seeing Giles, he then runs out of the apartment, scratching the arm of the awakened artist. Eventually Elisa, full of anxiety, finds him in the movie theater downstairs and brings him back to the apartment. Returning, the amphibian man places his hands on Giles' head and his wound. One night, Elisa can't sleep. She goes to check on the amphibian man, who is in her bathroom. She awkwardly removes her clothes and climbs into the tub. For the first time in her life, Elisa feels a connection with someone. The love she so desperately desired is now present in her life and she is glad to have found a new sense of existence. Meanwhile, Hofstetler is in his home and is visited by Russian bosses. Sensing danger, he hides a knife up his sleeve, but nothing happens, and they leave. Giles wakes up one morning and finds that hair has begun to grow on his head, where it used to be bald. He also notices that the cut on his arm has completely healed. At this time, Elisa and the amphibian man become very close. She even floods the bathroom so they can swim together. This causes a water leak throughout the house and the theater owner complains about this, forcing Giles to open the bathroom door. Back at the lab, General Hoyt tells Strickland that he must return their property to base in 36 hours or his career and life will be over. Elisa returns home one morning and realizes that the amphibian man is getting weaker by the day. She decides it is time to let him go, but she is not ready for their separation. Elisa even imagines a world in which they could be together. In this imaginary world, music fills the air, she can sing, and the love of her life dances with her. Meanwhile, one of his superiors shoots Hofstetler, but Strickland, waiting for the right moment, kills both superiors with his gun. Strickland tortures a barely alive scientist to get information about the creature and finds out that it was the cleaners who managed to deceive him and free the amphibian man. He goes to Zelda's house to interrogate her and her husband Brewster. Strickland begins acting like a maniac, desperate to find the amphibian man. Out of fear, Zelda's husband confesses that the creature is with Elisa. Zelda berates her husband and then calls Elisa to warn her. Strickland, gripped by anxiety, leaves, intending to search the cleaner's apartment. He arrives too late and sees a calendar showing the place where the amphibian man was planned to be freed. Strickland runs to the canal, knocks Giles down and shoots the amphibian man and Elisa. Accepting their fate, the lovers hold hands. At this time, Giles manages to get up and knocks Strickland down. Suddenly, the amphibian man stands up and heals his bullet wounds. Strickland is stunned and calls the amphibian man a god, but Creature slits Strickland's throat with his claws. When the police arrive, the amphibian man jumps into the water with Elisa in his arms. Zelda and Giles look after them, silently saying goodbye. The amphibian man kisses Elisa and touches the scars on her neck, the creature heals Elisa in the water and helps her begin to breathe through the gills on her neck, which were never scars. They remain underwater, in love, and happy that they can be together.